Telomere length declines during aging in both men and women. On the y-axis, we've got LTL or leukocyte telomere length, so telomere length in white blood cells. And on the x-axis, we've got age, plotted from 20 to about 100 years old. And here we can see the age-related decline for telomere length, such that in youth, telomere length is 7.75 kb or kilobases, whereas in advanced age, it's about 5 kilobases. Now, the importance of the age-related decline for telomere length is that shorter telomeres are associated with an increased all-cause mortality risk, which is what we can see here. On the y-axis, we've got cumulative survival, so all-cause mortality risk or risk of death for all causes, plotted against follow-up time, and in this case, it was 14 years after the initial assessment of telomere length. And here, we can see that people who had the longest telomeres had a significantly reduced all-cause mortality risk when compared with people who had the shortest telomere length as shown in blue. So that raises a few questions. First, can telomere shortening be slow during aging? Second, which factors may impact telomere length? And third, what's my data to illustrate or to attempt to address these questions? So in terms of what's my data, I sent blood to True Diagnostic. This discount link in the video's description if you want to measure your own telomere length. So the most recent data that I have is on July 5th of 2023. I also sent the sample in August, but I'm waiting on those results. So for the July test, we can see that my telomere length was 7.1 kilobases, which I've got some room for improvement because in youth, telomere length is 7.75 kilobases. But there is good news, and that involves looking at how telomere length in 2023 compares with 2022, so year-over-year -year changes, which is what we can see here. On the y-axis, we've got telomere length, and then on the left, we've got 2022 data versus 2023 data on the right. In 2022, over three tests, my average telomere length was 7.04 kilobases, whereas in 2023, the average is 7.14 kilobases. And rather than, rather than just looking at groups uh, or average data year over year, we can address whether they are statistically different by using a two-sample t-test. And when doing that, we can see that 2023 data is indeed significantly better than 2022, as you can see the p-value is less than 0 0.05. All right, so which factors may impact telomere length? And to address that first, let's take a look at calorie intake. This is calorie intake over the first seven tests. And that's what we can see here. On the y-axis, we've got telomere length. And on the x, we've got my average daily calorie intake. Now note that the average daily cal calorie intake, since I track my food every day with a food scale, that's from the previous test to the day before the most recent test. In other words, if there's 60 days in between blood tests, the average daily calorie intake then corresponds to that second test and for each test, there is a corresponding diet composition. So in terms of that correlation, we can see that calorie intake is inversely associated with telomere length over these first seven tests. In other words, when my calorie intake is relatively higher, my average daily calorie intake is relatively higher, telomere length is shorter, and conversely, a relatively lower calorie intake is significantly correlated with a longer telomere length. But calorie intake doesn't tell us much about diet composition. So what about that? How, how might that impact telomere length? So to address that, let's take a look at correlations for macro and micronutrients, which is what we can see partially here. These are macros and micros that have a p-value less than 0.05. But note that for a p-value less than 0.05, there were about 40 comparisons. And that p-value, that means that there are potentially five false positive per 100 comparisons. And because I looked at about 40 macros and micros, we can expect that at least two on this list could be a false positive discovery. So to address that, I calculated the false discovery rate, which is an extra layer of statistical rigor. And we can see that now only four are significant based on the p-value less than 0.05 cutoff and the FDR, false discovery rate cutoff, of less than 0.05. And they are omega, the omega-6 to omega-3 ratio, omega-3, copper, and vitamin B1. But they're going in different directions. So relatively higher omega-3 intake and vitamin B1 are significantly correlated with longer telomeres in my case. Whereas the, a higher omega-6 to 3 ratio and uh, copper are, are inversely correlated with telomere length in my data. Now, in addition to looking at macros and micros, I also looked at foods. And that's what we can see here. So again, this is the list of foods that were nominally statistically significant. So a p-value less than 0.05. I looked at about 50 different foods in my diet. And when considering, again, that five false positives per 100 comparisons, we can expect that two to three, based on a p-value less than 0.05, could be false, uh, false positives. So I calculated the FDR, and after calculating the FDR, only three remained statistically significant, 
Parmesan cheese, cocoa beans or cacao, and flaxseed. And more specifically, a relatively higher intake of Parmesan cheese and cacao beans are significantly correlated with a shorter telomere length, whereas conversely, flaxseed is significantly correlated with a longer telomere length. But note that everything I've just shown you are unadjusted correlations. Are these correlations still significant after accounting for calorie intake, especially when considering that calorie intake is significantly correlated with telomere length? So to address that, I looked at multivariate models, and that's what we can see here. So at the top, we've got the beta coefficient. Uh, so are, these, are the correlations for calories and Parmesan cheese positively or negatively associated with telomere length? And then the p-value, less than 0.05, being the measure of statistical significance. So after including calories in this model, we can see that Parmesan cheese is still significantly correlated or significantly associated with telomere length. So higher Parmesan intake is significantly correlated with a shorter telomere, telomere, sorry, telomere intake, sorry, a shorter telomere length after accounting for calorie intake. And then I use that similar, that same approach for both cacao beans and flax seeds. So after adjusting for calorie intake, we can see that a relatively higher intake of cacao is still significantly correlated or associated with a shorter telomere length. And conversely, after adjusting for calorie intake, a relatively higher flaxseed intake is significantly associated with a longer telomere length. I then used that approach for the macros and micros or the ones that were significantly associated with telomere length, but none of those four that were significant, omega-3, the six to three ratio, B1 or copper, none of those were significant after adjusting for telomere length. Now, rather than adding extra layers, uh, or in addition to adding extra layers of statistical rigor to try to identify what might be impacting telomere length, I can alter level, it, levels of these foods. And that, to me, would be the most direct approach. So that's the plan, to eat a bit less Parmesan, to eat a bit less cacao, and maybe a little bit more flax seeds. And we'll see how telomere length looks for the next test, test number six, which is planned for October of 2023. All right, that's all for now. If you're interested in more about my attempts to biohack aging, check us out on Patreon. And before you go, we've got a whole bunch of discount links and merch that you may be interested in, including discount links for at-home metabolomics, NAD quantification, epigenetic testing, including telomere testing, oral microbiome composition, green tea, at-home blood testing with SciFox Health. And note that their panel is different from the IOLO panel, so there's very minimal overlap. Diet tracking with chronometer, or if you'd like to support the channel, you can do that with the website, buy me a coffee. We've also got merch, so if you're interested in wearing the Conquer Aging or Die Trying brand, that link and all of the other links will be in the video's description. Thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.